pate is very, very rich. It's all liver, um, very strong on the palate, heavily buttered, so it's very, very heavy on the tongue. So when you're eating pate, you want to drink a really nice, light, crisp, clean wine that'll clean your palate at the same time, or you want to have something like a, a chutney or a uh, jelly to go with it. So we're going to do a real quick little shallot, sweet and sour shallot fig marmalade. And this is like, this is one of my classic favorite things to do. Um, it goes great on a piece of fish. It goes great on, uh, these all set to go. It goes great on fish. You can do it, mix it with a little bit of olive oil, add it a little bit to a pork chop, um, drizzle it over a steak. It's really nice. So pretty much what it is, is just uh, chopped shallots. I just have, you know, your normal shallot chopped up about, I'd say about a cup and a half here. Um, and we'll just take that and we'll just add it to a pan, warming it up. Just, I'm going to reserve just a little bit of these uh, shallots here. And then just balsamic. You want to put enough balsamic in there to cover the shallots. And you're like, wow, that's going to be a really strong vinegary taste. We're going to add brown sugar to this and then figs to it too. So it'll turn more to a syrup and then we'll let it cool down. So we're gonna take that and then, usually to about that much, I'd say about four tablespoons of brown sugar. So we'll just drop that in there. And this will just kind of be the, the syrup that you're gonna create. That's really good. And once that comes up to a simmer and boils together, the shallots will kind of melt together. So what I did is I chopped about, oh, eight or nine, just, uh, Black mission figs. And you use dried figs? Dried figs. <laughs> and, you, and I mean, you can go with the sulfured ones, you can go with the unsulfured ones. It's really up to your choice. You're just going to bring that up to a, a, a pretty much a boil and then turn it down just to simmer. You don't want to cook it too fast because you want the shallots to really get soft as you uh, cook the balsamic out. So I'd say just like a, a low simmer if we can get it there. I'm gonna do that. You can move on. Yep. Let me just watch it and turn it down a little bit. All right. So then for the uh, for the terrine, for the chicken liver mousse, this is to me. I think this is just. I love it. It's phenomenal. Um, liver. Nobody. I mean, everybody's like, oh god, I can't stand liver. I can't stand liver. Liver is so good if you do it the right way. Add enough fat to it. Add enough acidity to it, and uh, tastes good. These are just uh, Troyer Farms which is out of Olathe, organic. Well, they're not organic. They're natural, corn-fed, free-range chicken livers, okay? Chicken livers, obviously, they're, uh, they're an organ, you know? So there's definitely a little bit of uh, connective tissue in there. Um, so when I work with them, I like to just kind of look around. Sometimes there'll be like a little bit of netting on there. I just go in and take out just a little bit of those pieces of the organ there that's gonna, could be a little bit chewy when you do cook it. So this is just one pound of chicken livers here too. Um, the recipe I did is pretty much identical to the book. I do add a little bit more herb to it and some more cognac and some truffle oil to it just to liven it up a little bit. So then we're gonna take these chicken livers. Pretty much from here, it's very simple. Um, first thing you would wanna do is preheat your oven to 300 degrees. Um, I do them in these little tiny cups. You can do them in like the white ceramic ones that you would have at home. A lot of people, you know, the ones they sell over at Ace or something like that. You can do them in ball jars. This is a great idea for a holiday gift for people. And, you know, you drop that off with a little half bottle of wine and some Christinis, people will go crazy and they'll call you back and tell you they love you a thousand times. But we did it, I, I've done this and we used to do it at a restaurant with half the size ball and you just have a little top on it. And what you do to keep it for like, I actually, since we can't bake here, I did some more, but you'll see these have oxidized just on the bottom layer there, and these are already cooked. Um, this one is what the pate actually looks like, and then you pour butter and fat over the top of it to help to stop the oxidizing. And I just put a little bit of herbs and some garlic and stuff in there just to help it, you know. So there's, you know, you could do 10 of those in about an hour at home and send them off for Christmas gifts. And people. We're gonna need a little bit of melted butter for this recipe also, so we'll go ahead and get that melting right now. And just two sticks of melted butter. Just 
just two sticks. See, we're not talking, this is definitely not a diet meal here. This is, in Danielle's Baloo's book, this Cafe Baloo book, who Danielle Baloo is one of the best New York, probably one of the best chefs in the country for sure. But he talks about when he was a child how when his, you know, they're all French country, so everybody hunted in the French, in, in, the, in this countryside of, the, of France. And as his childhood, he'd say on Sundays, they would bring back all sorts of partridges and geese and ducks and all this stuff. And his mother always had a recipe. And he said by 5 o'clock, the entire family would be sitting at the table, shirts rolled up, a thing of pate in the middle of the table with a little bit of melted jelly on top, a knife in it, a bunch of country bread, bottle of wine, and nobody would leave until it was all gone. And he's like, and if you missed that, you, you, you were pretty much in trouble the whole, whole weekend. And it's a... Uh, his book is a great, great book, Cafe Baloo, if you haven't read that. It's just amazing. Um, so we got the butter melting. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of shallot. We're going to get that ready. And what we're going to do is we're going to saute that off. And then for this pate, we're going to do... I'm going to peel garlic for you while you keep going. What is, sure. There's a little bit of gratin. Um, there's a couple different ways. There's gratin pate where we could take all these chicken livers and everything else that we have here and mix it together and pack it into this. And then steam bath bacon. And that's more of a country style. Or you can do a mousseline style, which is a puree. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. So we're just melting that butter down right now. That's starting to, see how that's starting to dry out there? Mm. And everything's starting to come together. Mm. I got a little bit more sugar there, so I'll add just a touch more. So we'll add. I can tell it needs more sugar. I just want to see it kind of come together more as a, uh, you know, as a syrup, rather than cooking all the balsamic out of it before it becomes syrup. Okay, so the, just melted butter, you don't need, I mean, just bring it to a boil, melt it all down. Okay, so then we'll get it ready to cook the uh, the chicken livers. I just like to... Salted or unsalted butter? I use unsalted butter. Do you usually cook with unsalted butter? I always cook with unsalted butter. I think it is, I just think that butter tastes fine by itself. If a, you know, I'll add the salt to my dishes to make the salt come out. And I want certain things to come out. I don't necessarily want salty butter you know, it is good on a nice sourdough piece of toast every once in a while. Salted butter's for butter and bread on the table. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I never cook with it, and I only cook with kosher salt. Um, and lately I've been trying to stay away from salt as much as possible, just because of health reasons.